So we finally found another solitary, which appears to actually be solitary. This one looks uh, much smaller. And you can see completely closed in. Not even... Uh, now you can see here, even if it's open, it's just like a little screen or glass, actually glass with wire in it. Damn, that's really bad. Solitary. And one view from the inside. Oh my. Shit. Yeah, I don't want to be in this. I wouldn't want to be in here for a month or two. We are in the uh, west cell block, the solitary, which we had not been in before. This section was pretty intense. I had not a bad feeling really wandering down the hallway, but I have to admit that there was a couple of the cells that I went into. One of them I was trying to photograph the mirror with the condensation on it. I had a really strong urge to, to leave that cell. A couple of them I went in, it was like nothing. I didn't notice anything. But there was maybe one or two, I think two, that I felt, um, I don't know, it was hard to describe. It's like a um, feeling that something bad's going to happen, like a dread or something. I don't know. You just, basically, it's like you want to leave. You're, you're, okay, I'm ready to leave this room. I don't need yeah. to be in here anymore. You know, that's, and that's, honestly, that's about the extent of what I get. I, I don't go beyond that. Uh, and it comes up only rarely for me. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Ready? Ready. Right. Let's see what we find in here, huh? Oh, this is, this is a different feel. Yeah. There's a lot of pain in here. Oh, look at the uh, the handprint on the. their marbles like they kept getting put back in here hmm well, I don't even want to go in huh I don't even like want to go in this is like scary hmm be a place of desperation for sure, huh? Man. I'm okay. Oh, because you did that once before. I'm just, I'm going to step away from that, so. Okay. That's fun to do. 
deep breath. Hmm. What What did you find with this um, the fellow? You said he lost his marbles. I've been in there a long time. Yeah, so we did find out, we did corroborate later on with the people that run the um, historical site that sometimes the prisoners were left in solitary for, like, very long periods of time. They were usually, like, the problem inmates that they wanted to separate from the others to prevent them from, like, you know, shenanigans and stuff. And so, you know, sometimes they were in there for, like, months or even years at a time, and there were also the really bad ones. Like, they said, like, you know, specifically the really bad murderers and, like, the pedophiles and stuff. So this area was literally the worst of the worst. And in this case, um, this particular inmate uh, that I had gotten from him was that he had been in there a very long time. Like, that he was definitely a repeat offender where he would be put in solitary for long periods of time. And, you know, even after being in normal circulation with the other inmates, he would eventually end up back in solitary. And he was just very, like, fighting against these guards that were putting him back in solitary. He did not want to go kicking and screaming, begging them not to leave him in there. And it was clear he had a few screws loose. Like, you know, he just was missing some of his sanity from being in solitary so many times for such long periods of time and i mean as y'all can imagine seeing this i mean i don't think anybody would retain all of their sanity if you're being locked in a such a small dark space with no uh, contact yeah from... we were talking about it there's yeah. a light in there but you have no idea if the guards would turn the lights out Mess for with long them. periods of time you don't know and then once you shut the door you couldn't see anything it'd just be no. dark and it'd be quiet um, too they're like like soundproof yeah well you can see in the movie shawshank redemption how uh andy was you know after 60 days in a cell of course he didn't even have a bunk in his yeah and who knows if they took the bunks out of these sometimes because the bunks are gone for most of them but, yeah uh you really don't have any idea what was going on there no uh, but it definitely was bad yeah okay great He can see me. He is upset that I'm not letting him out. Hmm. He's like, I know you can see me. Let me out of here. Hmm. It's like uh, condensation or something on the mirror. This is a very sad person, just broken. Oh yeah, water everywhere. Oof. The next one, you encountered a, a slightly different mm -hmm. uh, vibe from the cell, right? Absolutely. So this was more like, you know, someone who's just been completely broken. Like their spirit has just been completely broken by solitary, which I mean, it's sad, but it's true. That's kind of the goal of solitary confinement was to make them docile and, you know, willing to follow orders and just broken spirit, not a problem. And that's kind of how this guy was, just very hopeless, listless, just kind of like existing. Not so the other one anymore. was more energy, yes. but, but like crazy time. Yes. And this one was uh, basically, I just don't care anymore. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's just misery and and subdued yeah it was like right? all the light in the room had just been sucked out it was just mm. ho the most hopeless dark energy it was right. very sad okay all right thanks hmm. the water on the floor is like making it like stronger yeah oh here's a a bunk in this one not sure. You think they put two people in one of these? Oh my god. Damn. That would be horrible. The rust on the shirt. Yeah, man. There's like hardly any room in here. Basically, I guess you would just live in your bed all the time. Man. I don't know. 
that's a pretty grim existence. Whew. You don't, uh, you know, when you see these, oh, there's another one. This one's a little bit different. You can actually see better. Huh. They'll come in. Oof. You okay? Yeah. Hmm. Like a vertigo. Like I was like really dizzy and out of it. And right. One of the inmates in there like had some sort of illness and was just constantly throwing up. Hmm. And like the other inmate was like screaming for the guard like, oh my God, like He's going to die. He's going to die. Let, you know, you got to let us out. He's going to die. It was just like, when I, when I put my hand on the door, it was like the whole room was spinning. Oh, my. Man. Okay, the next one I thought was the most interesting encounter um, with two people in the cell. Yes. And pretty vivid recollection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one um, was very vivid because the other two, um, I didn't really, like, there's, um, sometimes I can see what the person looks like. Like, if I sat down, I could do a sketch of what they look like. With those two, I didn't really get a sense for any physical features. It was just kind of a presence in general, whereas these two, I could definitely sketch these two. It was very vivid, and they were definitely in one of them that had the double bunk, which, oh my god, I can't imagine how horrible that is, and one of the inmates was violently ill like we're talking like laying on the floor fever sweats throwing up violently and the other inmate was literally like you know fists banging on the door you know screaming for help from the guards and of course nobody's gonna come help nobody's listening because they're in solitary and they can pull all sorts of shenanigans to get attention all the time so you know i don't know like what happened in this scenario i don't know if they got help i don't know if he died i i don't know i didn't get that piece of information i just got this scene this very dramatic you know very vivid scene and actually when i pulled my hand away from the cell I personally had vertigo like the whole room was spinning and I felt ill like I had to take a breath and take a minute like it was very right. scary yeah. that's when I heard you make that weird uh, sound yeah right? yeah like a breath sound or something it was it startled me just a little bit I noticed it at least it was unusual yeah and i've been you know i'm not aware of doing that um so much it's um i've been told by brian and by other people that that is a signal for if i am being taken over by something it's a very dangerous thing and i was definitely being overcome by that scene um and it can ultimately lead to me being possessed which is a very terrifying experience for me and everybody else around me and so that kind of signal is for us that it's like, I need to be removed from the situation. And so that's why I was like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm still me, meaning I'm still myself. I'm not possessed by anything, but I was like, I need to step away from this cell. I need to get away from this situation to keep everybody safe. Yeah. I think the worst was at OSR that yes. time we'd gone into a room and um, there's a thing for like um, urban exploration people called paint porn. Um, you saw it in the honor dorm and, and in a lot of these cells, all the peeling paint. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes it. They like to photograph it. They find it fascinating. Yeah. And in this particular room in OSR, the colors of the paint that was peeling and the light coming in the window was really fascinating. And yeah. I'd gone in there to photograph the, the paint. And I just gone in with and you. And Warren had followed me in and was yeah. standing in the middle of the room. And the next thing you know, she's like practically taken over. Yeah. She's like it was not very responsive. Fast. Scott was there, thank goodness. Yeah. And uh, Scott was, uh, we, were, we were just like trying to raise her and she was not responding to us at all. Yeah. And uh, we basically drug her out of the room. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we stayed out of there after that. As soon as you left the room, you pretty much started coming back around. Yeah. But it was, um, it was definitely an odd experience for me. Yeah. Uh, to see it, you know, firsthand. Yeah. And yeah, we didn't. 
we didn't need that again. No. Really, it was bad for everybody. Probably. Yeah, it, it, and and I don't <laughs> and, have uh, any personal memory of these things happening. When I get taken over by something, I cease to be me. I have no ability to know what's going on or what I'm doing, and I don't remember any of this. This, you know, I only know these things by what Brian or whoever's there with me experiencing it. Mm. You know, otherwise, I have no recollection. I only know when I come to that something has happened um, because of the way I'm feeling. But what I've said and done, I have no idea. It's a very scary, out of control experience. And we always do all we can to prevent something like that from happening. So yeah, we're always very careful. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> we try. <laughs> all righty, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And that was the door where I stopped in front of it because my arm started hurting. Oh. Still hurts a little bit. Holy shit, it goes on and on. Oh. Well, we cannot go through, but there's more. A lot of these cells, my goodness, they kept a lot of people like this. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Beyond this door is something really horrible. I can feel it. There's something really bad in there. I'm shaking. Like I can feel like my inside's shaking. Hmm. From in here? Yeah. Okay, so we got to the end of the, the cell block and we couldn't go any further, but we could see that there was a whole other section of it uh, that was virtually the same. And uh, we're kind of looking through the window, peeking about, seeing, you know, what's there, mm -hmm. checking the door. If, can we go further? You know, is there a way to go any further? And um, Lauren is telling me that there's something very bad on the other side. Yeah. And I'm not getting anything. Yeah. I mean, to me, it just looks like, another hallway yeah um but you uh in the end you were like trembling and yeah. shaking and everything yeah so again this has to do with what i've talked about with crossing thresholds that it's like i can sense presences beyond thresholds that i'm in however in order to do any sort of investigation into what it is or any information i have to be in that space i'm very much the type of person where i need the proximity to get that information and so um, because we couldn't cross over the threshold, I couldn't get into that space. I wasn't able to collect that information. Basically, what I was experiencing was that something at the very far end of that hall um, was very bad. There was a very, very strong, ominous, bad presence. I don't know if it was human or a non-human entity. I couldn't glean that information, but it was very, very bad. And that's actually a common thing where any areas that have um, less foot traffic, there's less activity, oftentimes there will be um, very powerful presences in those areas, specifically because those are the kind of presences that like to be left alone. So there are the ones that seek attention and they love high traffic areas, and then there are the ones that like to be left alone, and they'll go in areas that have very low foot traffic, you know, low to none. And so, you know, it's this kind of dichotomy thing. And that was definitely a presence that likes to be left alone. And so it was in an area that was just completely inaccessible. Which kind of leads us to the next encounter. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go back, I think. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, for me... Even though I don't sense what you sense, uh, I can still, I mean, like I was saying, you don't feel how depressing and how oppressive this would be until you're actually physically here. If you see this in the movies or on a TV show, you know, where they put people in these, you don't get the how bad it really is. You know the full effect of how small it is yeah and, dark, and, and dingy and right can you imagine if you were in here with no light i mean for months or weeks 
whatever. So they put people in here for months at a time. Yeah. You know, I mean, and feed them two pieces of bread and one thing of water a day. You know, there's a diet for you. Lock you in a dark room for 30 days and get two slices of bread and one glass of water every day. Man. Okay. Yeah, well, it was meant, I think, to subdue them completely, you know. Oh, here's the big thing to do. Release. They shot off the lock right here. Yeah, this would, I guess, open all the doors, unlock all the doors. Huh. Well, um, this. I looked in here briefly earlier, but I couldn't see. I didn't have my light. What is this? This goes into. Ah, this is more cells, and I think this is where you can get to the, um, you know, the towers or something. I don't know. It's drier. What do you feel about this? Feel a lot of weird vibes. Yeah? Yeah. We should stay up? Um, I mean, it has a caution tape on it. That's my only thing. Yeah. It makes me wonder if this door closes, are we going to be able to open it again? I don't know. Hold the door, okay? I'll just walk in a little bit, see what's... Some kind of holding cells. There's just a bench and um, you know, the cells are clean. Oh, this is a sh looks like a shower unit. This is like washing area. The far room is where I'm getting the vibes from to your left, all the way down. Okay. Yeah, this is like a big holding area with benches, like on the wall, and uh, one toilet. Uh, it's just a closet, like has shelving in it. Hmm. Yeah, There's nothing really special in here. Not like. Ah. Here you can see the outside wall, but it's blocked up. I don't want to try to climb it. All right. Here, you can hold the door and turn the light, and I'll go in that closet and see what it is I'm seeing over there. Okay. Oh. I hear voices. Not those voices. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, that was scary. I did not enjoy that. Okay. Right. What was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just I got this like feeling of like something really, really bad is gonna happen, and I like all of a sudden realized if I get possessed, what are we going to do? Because if I take off, what are we going to do? And I just was like, holy shit, and I ran. Just terrifying. I'm okay. All right. We're about to leave and we had, I had poked my head in this um, storage area I thought or whatever it was it was dark mm -hmm. this time we chose to go in it after yeah. some brief discussion of course we're crossing the caution tape and everything and, we broke the rules but, mm -hmm. but there was no damage in this area at no. all it was in really good shape and once I got in there I could see 
that it was like a holding area and everything. And I didn't really have much of an inkling of anything in there, really, except when I was leaving and I could see in this one room, you could see through the room and you could see a door and you could see the outer wall of the building. You could see the, like the big the stone, building. the big stone area. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to go in there and check it out and, and see if there was some way to, to go up. Yeah. But I just did not want to go in the room. I don't know why. We were just talking about it earlier today. I have no idea why I didn't want to go in there, but I just didn't feel like it. Yeah. And I just said, eh, okay, it's not worth it. It doesn't, you know, I just kind of rationalized it, but I just had a weird feeling. So then I came out, Lauren goes in, and then the next thing I know, she's running out the door. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I was completely 100% unaware of what Brian was feeling about that particular room that he described. Um, and so I did not investigate it because I was too busy with the thing that I was sensing. So, definitely, um, what Brian had felt about that room, that's usually a clue that if you're not a sensitive person, that if you enter a space and suddenly you very much don't want to be there and there's no rational reason for you to feel that way there's probably some sort of presence there that's probably why you're feeling that it's something's not quite right but the presence that i was feeling was just way stronger than anything else that was in that area that it was pretty much i had like blinders on i just you know couldn't you know focus to figure out anything else that was there i just didn't care about it um but i what i was focused on was when brian uh went in uh to investigate I was, you know, technically over the threshold because I was standing there holding the door open because that was the thing we were worried about with the caution tape. That once you're on the other side of it, you can't get it open and we didn't want to be locked in there. Um, so that's why we kind of did that little jostling about. But um, I found a non-human entity at the end of that hall. And the thing is, is that I have encountered non-human entities and honestly human entities that are way scarier, more violent, just more dangerous than that. Um, not to say it was it w wasn't dangerous or scary. It was, but you know I've encountered worse. But the thing that scared me the most was it was in that moment that I realized, based on our situation, that I was like, if I get possessed, if this thing possesses me, we are screwed. You know, Brian's standing there holding the door open so we don't get locked out. And if I because this has happened in the past where I've gotten possessed and I just take off running just gone boom goodbye because some entities like to play a game called chase where they like to possess somebody and just run off and have everyone chase them i don't know why they do that it's just a game they like to play and i was scared that that might happen and if that happens we have no way to deal with that and so i was very scared at that possibility and i was like i need to get out i need to get out right now I need to remove myself from the situation. This is way too dangerous. And it just really shook me up. But you saw a tall, shadowy figure, right? Yes. And then later, we are talking to the hosts, the, the people that are restoring the, the prison mm -hmm. that are there all the time. Yeah. We were describing the encounter to them. And they mentioned that number of people have encountered what they call, quote, the tall man. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's some tall, shadowy figure. Like 10 you... feet tall, black. The legs are way too long to be human. The limbs uh, are just way too long. The proportions are off. It's just very off-putting and, and very scary. And there's, like, references to that in movies and other, yeah. other stories and things, other places. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's something that multiple people have encountered there. They're typically um, called shadow people is what they're most commonly referred to. They're usually yeah. just these weird black shadow silhouette things that just, like, happen to pop up in haunted places. It's a very common thing. And they always look like that. Like, they vary in height a lot, like 8 feet, 10 feet tall, you know. And they always just have way too long of limbs. The proportions are just off. And you can never glean any actual, like, features. They're always just a weird black silhouette but yeah shadow people like that and um they're always called gray ladies like ladies that are like all gray you know those are like the two most common things that people usually see in mm -hmm. hauntings okay yeah very cool